Um, yeah, so uh, camp was great. Uh, and really and truly, who cares, man? It's game week. Uh, who cares about camp? It was, it was, it, it is what it is. We had a uh, had a good uh, three weeks or so of camp, and now uh, our focus is on game week, purely on game week. And um, we call this it's it's uh, you know we kind of go through this process in the off season uh, with our spring. We call it our get ready phase. So we're trying to get ready for uh, this new season, this new. Uh, journey that we're going to be on with new recruits and, and all of those things. And then you, you leave your get ready phase, you go into uh, a, a what we call a transitional phase where you're transitioning your team. So now you're bringing all of these new faces in. Um, you're trying to introduce them to your new culture and, and things of that nature. And then uh, you leave that and you go into now uh, what we call the celebration phase. And, uh, and that's a big deal for us because uh, that's how we want to treat game days. Um, game day is a special day. I mean, especially in the sport of football, just because it's, it's, uh, it's obviously it's the best sport, but it's also a weird sport in the sense that you practice more uh, twice, three times as much as you play. You only get 11 guaranteed opportunities, and uh, we want to make sure that all 11 of those opportunities are uh, celebrated in the way that they need to be celebrated and, and are uh, approached in the way that they need to be approached. So um, that's our focus right now, um, just going through our preparations, going through our plans for SIU. They've got a good ball club. Uh, but uh, our preparations have been tremendous uh, over the fall camp uh, camp period and, and leading up into this game week. So we're just uh, we're really really excited to get going. Uh, what time do we play Thursday? About six. We'll see. We'll see about five fifty nine or so. We'll make that decision. Whoever trots out on the field. Uh, that'll be that'll be our decision at quarterback. How healthy are you entering this week? Uh, we're pretty healthy. We we uh, you know our, our fall camp is is a little unique just because we go to school. Um, yeah, I think UT Martin. As a matter of fact, I think they started school today. I um, mean, we've been in school since the 14th, so we only get about 13 days of fall camp. Uh, which, from a head coach's standpoint, I just be honest with you, that kind of helps me um, because it. It almost forces us to be um, a little bit more protective of the guys because we don't have as much time with them for them to, to beat on one another and, and those type things. But um, I felt really good. You know, me and Fulton talked about it coming out of our second scrimmage uh, where at that point we had had a little over 200 scrimmage plays all together. Our injury report was front and back two pages, you know, and it was going through all of the bumps and bruises. And now um, as you go into game week, it's a half a page, and that's that's about where you want it to be. That's kind of a an ideal fall camp situation. So I uh, was really pleased with that. And I will say, too, I think that that is um, that is a testament to uh, uh, John Michael Clay, our, our strength coach, and uh, and the work that he did over the summer uh, because we did have you know we had 76 players here through June and July working out. And uh, I think that that's a testament to, to that time that he had with them, those seven weeks that he had to prepare with them, um, and the work that they put in, that the players themselves put in. Tell us a bit about your offensive line. I noticed you have uh, Levi Nestler, one on the depth chart, a red chart freshman here at the center. Yeah, we, uh, so Austin Jones uh, was a junior college transfer, uh, came in mid-year, had a, a tremendous spring, was going to be our starter. And then uh, we were warming up on one day in the weight room. Um, uh, I guess maybe it was the end of spring, maybe something like that. I think it was the end of spring. Um, just warming up, literally just stretching. And um, and he broke a bone in his foot. It was just one of those weird deals uh, where it's probably a hairline fracture that just kind of uh, snapped, you know, got to the point where it snapped, which wound up being a blessing in disguise because he won't miss very much time. We were able to get him back. He's already had a couple of practices in. Uh, but it, it afforded Levi an opportunity to take that starting role at center. Um, and uh, Levi did a tremendous job in doing that. You know, a lot of people saw the post where we where we put Levi on scholarship and a hometown guy uh, walked on the team. It's just, uh, you know, you talk about a guy with, with, with gravel in his guts and those things. I mean, that guy, he's got it now. He's a tough kid. Um, that was an easy scholarship to give. And, and, um, and he's a guy that made the most out of that opportunity. You know, we talk about that all the time, being ready when your opportunity presents itself, and he was. Um, so he's going to be the starter going into game one, and then we'll just kind of play it out from there based on uh, Austin's progression moving back and, and see where we're at. So we look for anything different as far as offensive or defensive schemes? Um, not really. You know, I mean, um, 
Coach Johnson. Obviously, I've got a new defensive coordinator with Coach Johnson, um, and he, he, he'll he put his twist on things. But the personnel is what we have, so we're going to try to put that personnel in the best uh, best situation as possible offensively. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of always been who I am um, and, and won't change that. So, um, you know, I don't think that there will be a huge change in, in either one of those. How comfortable do you feel at running back? Um, I see you've got DJ Pinnick, Rodney Castile, Quarterman Sloan. How 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 comfortable? Uh, really comfortable. Uh, we feel good with all three of those guys. Um, and uh, and then as a matter of fact, uh, two days ago we moved Nolan back to that position as well. Um, Nolan Nichols, um, which he's always one of your favorites there, Ed. So I figured I'd give him a shout out for you. Uh, we moved him back to running back as well. Uh, so uh, you know we we feel comfortable in the depth that we have right there and we also feel comfortable in what all three of those guys bring to the table um, and four now with Nolan added there um, because you got DJ uh, DJP who you guys know I've always been high on um, he's kind of an all-around back he does a little bit of it all um, and then you've got Rodney Castile who was a wide receiver and then when uh, Justin Connor had his knee injury we moved Rodney Castile back there um, in the backfield and uh, you know Rodney's just he's he's a ball player man I'm, I'm pretty sure we could move him to quarterback and he'd be just fine he'd learn it in a couple of days he'd be just fine um, but he's he's got some explosive ability to him and then you got Quarterman Sloan um, who's kind of a scat back you know he can change direction he can cut he can be going right and stick his toe in the ground and go left um, just about as fast as anybody I've seen so you've got a cool dynamic with those three and then everybody knows you know Nolan's going to be a downhill back um, could possibly do some some uh, some bigger set runs and some things like that, just because he's, you know, he's very rocked up, very muscled up, and uh, and goes downhill very fast. Is there any particular thing that you believe Thursday's game will turn on? Um, I you know I think it's it all it's always going to come down to the same five things for us, <clears throat> and it's the same five things that we go over after the game. Um, and, it, you know, it starts with turnovers, um, who, tu who gets the ball turned over, which last year we did an incredible job of that um, defensively. Uh, what offense can, can hold on to the ball, um, no matter the weather, you know, or anything, it doesn't matter the weather. Um, you, you've got to be able to hold on to the football and not turn it over. Um, who's going to be the best on third downs? What defense is going to be able to get the offense off the field on third downs? What offense is going to be able to stay on the field on third downs? Um, usually that progresses into the red zone. And uh, so whatever team can put sixes on the boards and not three uh, when they get those opportunities to be in the red zone. And, uh, and then you've got the kicking game. Uh, you know, obviously you've always got to be solid in the kicking game. Um, you know, I think from two years ago we learned, you know, if you remember two years ago they opened up the game with a, with a kickoff return for 99 yards um, and a touchdown. So, um, you know, we have, to, we have to break even or we have to have a big play in the kicking game. And then the last of our five truths is just uh, making the big play. You know, there's there's going to be plays out there that present themselves to each team, um, and it's going to boil down to what team made the most of those opportunities uh, when those big plays were presented. And uh, if if we're the leader in all five of those categories, it's very hard to lose. Um, the more of those that you split with the other team, it's going to make it tougher and tougher to win. And uh, and they've got a good football team, but so do we. And um, and like I said, we're just excited now to, to hit somebody with a different color. You talk about that excitement. Generally, in, in years past, there's been kind of a soft open, maybe like a dress rehearsal of sorts. How exciting, or maybe even what's the mindset of a week where it's not really a dress rehearsal, it's SIU? Well, it's, it's the same. I mean, just because, you know, I mean, even uh, in the dress rehearsal, as, as you call it, you know, we were going to approach that game the same as we would SIU as well, you know, and, and uh, I hate to be so cliche, but that's, that just is how it is. I mean, that's, um, you know, there's always that law of competition. It doesn't matter who you play. If you go out there and you, and you go to sleep or you don't, you don't feel like playing or you don't feel like going through the, the, the processes and the details that you have to do to win, um, you can get your fanny beaten. It doesn't matter what team you play. Um, so we're going to approach it the same way um, as we always do, um, even if it was a, a, a different type of game. Uh, the mindset will be the same. What's the biggest challenge that SIU presents for you? Um, well, I, I think that they're a good mix of size and speed. I know that two years ago um, I went into that game thinking, you know, it's a Missouri Valley team. Um, I thought that size-wise they were uh, – that was going to be our biggest um, – uh, deficiency 
was just how big they were going to be. And then I remember getting to the stadium, and that really didn't, uh, as we got into that first quarter, that really didn't take me by surprise as much as how much speed they had. Just because, you know, uh, you're playing a team that's in a league that, um, that plays, you know, quote unquote, big boy football. They get in big sets and 21 personnels, and they play with a lot of tight ends, and it's very smash mouth up in that uh, neck of the woods. And uh, so I really thought that that was what we were, uh, were going to see and what we had to be prepared to face. And, um, you know, like I said, they took the opening kickoff 99 yards uh, for a touchdown, and they did it in a hurry. And, um, you know, so I think that's the biggest. Uh, challenge that these guys present is they're a good mix. They've got some, they've got some guys on both sides of the ball, especially up front on their D line and offensive line, um, that are big. And um, and if you're not careful, they can move you. Um, they can create space for their skill guys. And then they've got some skill guys that are very, very talented. They've got a, a running back on offense that's very talented. Um, they've got some guys in the back end defensively that are talented. They've got some good returners, um, kick returners and punt returners. So uh, they're a good football team. Uh, losing a player like Andre Wade on D, who do you hope uh, to step up on defense for me to see? Somebody, you know, that's that's just the deal. Uh, somebody's got to step up. Um, anytime, you know, anytime you lose guys to graduation and those type things, um, it's just a great opportunity. Uh, that's that's what it is. It's not a challenge. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. Um, it's not a concern. Um, it's just a great opportunity for somebody else um, to step into that leading role. And, uh, and somebody will do it. Man, we've had a lot of competition at those positions. Um, like we said before, it's been a good fall camp. And uh, so I'm just excited to see uh, who will emerge as that guy. Two sophomores on defense, uh, Don Parker, Cortez Roberts. How comfortable do you feel about those two guys going into Thursday? Um, obviously really comfortable with Don Parker because he's, he's, he's got some battle scars. He's been through it, was a tremendous player for us last year. Um, and then Cortez, uh, you know, just his preparation going through uh, the off season, going through summer, going through fall camp, everything like that. He's he's been tremendous, um, very confident kid. Um, so I don't I don't have a lot of um, I don't have a lot of concerns with him other than just the unknown. You know, when the lights come on, that'll be the first time that the lights have come on in a Murray State jersey for him. So, <clears throat> um, you know, in a in a big role where he's going to play a lot of snaps. Um, so that's just the only thing is just seeing how he handles that. But if I know him like I think I do and just the conversations I've had with him, he's a pretty confident kid. He, he won't have any problems. Will we see any of that evaluation process with the red shirts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I tell you, that's been a unique situation just in how you handle those guys, how you, how you approach those guys from, a, from an hourly standpoint and a week, you know, and, and their, uh, their uh, weight room preparations because usually it's pretty cut and dry. Hey, if you are a red shirt, you are going to be in the – the lifting groups four days a week, and if you were a dress squad guy, you're in there for two. And and now all of a sudden you put that element of well, this guy could play, this guy could play. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Hey, JC, this week these guys are not going to be four day lift guys because we're going to travel them. We want to see them play, and um, and I think it's great. I think it's great for college football. I'm happy that the rule got placed uh, or put into place um, because I think it's good for those kids. It's good for uh, for the program. Um, and it's also good for those guys, and, and Ed, you and I have had a couple of conversations about this. It's good for those guys, especially at the end of the season when you start getting banged up and guys are playing hurt, which is football. That's just a physical sport. It's what they're supposed to do. Um, you, you have a chance to say, okay, hey, look here, give me three plays of the best you have, then I'll get you out because I got this other guy that I can roll in there, and then we can get three plays of the best you have again, so on and so forth, as opposed to just kind of taking those injured guys, throwing them out there and going, man, they're just going to play until they can't play anymore. And I think from a player safety standpoint, it's a really good rule too. So it'll be interesting to see um, how co college football as a whole uses it, you know, because it doesn't have to be four games in a row. It can be spread out among the season. You can play week one, three, five, seven, it doesn't matter. Um, but I think that it's a it's a really good opportunity for some of those guys. Coach, this morning the OVC announced its partnership with ESPN Plus. Um, yeah. I just want to know what your thoughts were on that platform and the exposure that it brings to your team and university. Uh, well, the biggest thing that I see is just from a recruiting standpoint. You know, I think that's a that's a huge deal when you have parents and recruits ask you, "Hey, how how am I going to get to see my son play?" Um, and you can tell them, say, hey, listen, our, our conference is partnered with ESPN. You can go to these, the, whether it's on TV this week, whether it's on the computer or whatever. Um, everybody knows ESPN. You know, that's, that's a household name. So I think, uh, 
I think it does nothing but um, help uh, promote uh, the OBC.